Okay. So now um, we imagine that at, at time equals zero, we apply an electric field. This is going to be our perturbation. The electric field has an amplitude, has a magnitude of, of uh, psi, and we just we're, we choose that symbol instead of e, which is a normal signal sim symbol, just because we want to differentiate between what we used to call the energy. Okay, what we've been calling the energy. So the electric field uh, has a magnitude psi, and it's applied along the direction, the x direction. <coughs> and we turn that um, electric field on at, t, at time equals zero, and we keep it on for a duration delta t. Okay. So now we have uh, our perturbation again has to have energy units. If we put a charge, in this case an electron, into an electric field we have, it has a potential energy that depends on its position, okay? Um, just like when we put a, an object into a gravitational field, the gravitational potential energy of the, of, the, of the particle or the object depends linearly on the position, okay? So for, you know, the, for, for example, the, poten the gravitational potential energy would be uh, m, the mass, times g, the gravitational acceleration times z the height and here we have a very similar form uh, little e the elementary charge times psi the electric field magnitude times the position x okay <clears throat> so that's the um, that's the perturbation uh, that we're going to apply at t equals zero for duration delta t <clears throat> okay so now we have uh, uh, if we go if we look, if we remember the uh, form of the uh, the wave function at delta t from the last slide, we have that uh, uh, psi of delta at delta t is equal to um, this normal time evolution of the wave function that we start in. And I said we start in the uh, ground state, and so that gives us this is the ground state of the unperturbed potential. I'm giving the superscript zero or not just because we um, we want to remember that this is the eig this is, these are the eigenstates of the unperturbed Hamiltonian okay so this is the normal time evolution so this is basically um, th if you applied no perturbation this would be um, uh, the time evolution of the uh, of the initial state um, but now we have this uh, perturbation term uh, where we have a time evolution which depends on the, the magnitude of the perturbation and since our perturbation has this uh, factor the position uh, x then we have to multiply by x and we get this term here okay so this is the perturbation term <coughs> now if we think about what the solutions if we remember what the solutions to the unperturbed Hamiltonian are Okay, so that is the, 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 the situation here uh, without the uh, perturbation, then the, um, we know that uh, the, the, the ground state is going to be a cosine function now because it can't be zero at the origin. It has to be a maximum at the origin, okay? And we see that for any odd value of n, we get a cosine solution. And for even, any even value of n, we get a sine solution. Okay, so the ground state n equals one, we get a cosine solution. The second excited state that's n equals three and so on, we get cosine solutions. But for uh, the first excited state n equals two and every other uh, even solution, even value of n, we get the sine solution. Okay, so this is the difference. This is what you have to do in order to account for the fact that the um, that we've changed the boundary condition somewhat. Basically, we've shifted our well from going from 0 to L to minus L over 2 to L over 2. Now the physics is the same, the energies are the same, in fact the solutions look the same. Um, if you didn't put any labels and you just made a well of, of length L, then the, the solutions look the same as before, but now we've just um, adapted the situation and, and you'll see why in just a second.